next item, uh, it will be the second year that we've we've done this. This will be the state of the county address that will be delivered by our county manager, Mr. Leandro. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good morning. So I'm going to do my best to get through this. It's a little lengthy. We've done what we can to kind of consolidate, but we've had a lot of accomplishments this year. So. The state of the county address is our way of letting you, the Taos County Board of Commissioners, as well as our constituents, know the positive changes as well as the challenges faced by the various departments in Taos County government. It is also our way of letting you know some of our goals and expectations for our departments moving forward into 2018. As county manager, it was most gratifying to have each of the elected officials and department heads refer to the team as being responsible for their successes of 2017. We truly can accomplish great things for our constituents if we continue to work as a team. The current elected officials, management, and staff helped our taxpayers see many improvements to their way of life in 2017. I would have liked to have li listed all the accomplishments and goals of each of our elected officials and department heads, but um, in the interest of time, we've selected only a few of the highlights from each department, beginning with our elected officials. Um, nobody wants to see me up here for an hour, but we will get through them. So. I want to start with our House County Clerk, Ana Martinez, and her staff worked diligently in 2017 to update records in the computer system. They updated business license records, moving businesses that are no longer in operation and adding new and existing businesses that did not have licenses to operate. Survey plats have been scanned, preserving the originals. The updates will make it easier for constituents to access accurate records. Goals for 2018 are to put records online, making access more convenient for the public, this will also save on these labor costs as our citizens will not have to come into the office to search for records. Another goal is to start e-recording, which would allow banks and title companies to send their documents through a secure site for recording. The office continues to work on scanning marriage licenses, minutes, and other documents, all with great customer service. In 2017, the Secretary of State's office upgraded the New Mexico voting systems to a program called SERVICE, which is the State Election Registration and Voting Integrity System. Rosa Flores and the Bureau of Elections staff have been working on all the voter files to prepare for the 2018 elections. They look forward to providing Taos County with true and transparent elections this year as in the past years and in years to come. Our probate court under Judge Paloma Romo continues to hold walk-in office hours for the public on Mondays and Wednesdays in individual meetings by appointment for the judge. They st strive to be more accessible to the public and are willing to accommodate both Taos County residents and out-of-town property owners. During 2017, they've expanded their public resources by having printed pamphlets and materials available in the county clerk's office. With information regarding the probate process and other legal issues dealing with property, estate planning, and probate, they have begun developing a probate court library and are currently working on a system to have this library resources available to the public. They prioritize forging collaborative and productive relationships with other agencies of Taos County to provide the most accurate and helpful information to the public. The probate judge attended several trainings on the probate process <clears throat> to be able to provide the most up-to-date information on the law to the public. The biggest goal for 2018 is to have a web page developed specifically for the probate court to be part of Taos County website to include information about the court services, office hours, jurisdictional limits, and with links to the New Mexico Supreme Court website for probate forms. Our Taos County Treasurer, Susan Trujillo, with the able assistance of her staff, have upgraded not only the way property owners pay their bills, but also how they access that information. Treasurer Trujillo initiated a live web lookup project, which allows the public to search taxpayer accounts via the web. Due to the increased general fund reserves, the Treasurer, along with the Board of Finance, implemented an investment strategy that significantly increased interest returns while maintaining 100% collateralization protection of our taxpayer funds. Delinquent taxpayers have been prioritized by the amount owed and notifications were sent beginning in July rather than January, giving our constituents more time to make payment arrangements. Our Taos County Sheriff Jerry Hogriff and his dedicated squad of deputies and staff have an extensive list of accomplishments goals and priorities with the ultimate being the safety and well-being of all citizens and guests of Taos County. A brief snapshot of 2017 includes a regional training of in-house training, compliance with the New Mexico Department of Public Safety biannual training, um, forums, have been held, forums have been held and neighborhood watches ongoing. 
Improvements have been made in tracking cases, follow-ups, and follow-through. Patrol districts are in part established and school programs and patrols in place. We now have deputies trained for motor patrol to concentrate on traffic complaints and a canine for drug detection. Partnerships with Tri-County, Carson, Carson National Forest Patrol, BLM, Crime Stoppers in our schools have been enhanced. TCSO has brought many new criminal cases, two convictions including two high profile murder cases, as well as workplace violence recognition and prevention training for county staff and other governments and organizations. They added an evidence tech to the force to help with case preparations, which allows deputies more time on patrol and investigations, which in turn has generated more arrests and convictions. In 2018, Sheriff Hogarth and his team have prioritized enhancement of staffing, continued vehicle replacement, and increased training opportunities, uh, as well as a standalone computer server for T TCSO and their cameras and HIDA training funding and resources. Our Taos County DWI program. Um, DWI program staff under the coordination of Mr. Herbert Valdez has been very active in compliance and prevention in 2017. Prevention is always a priority. The use of billboards, brochures, fact sheets, newsletters and handouts have increased the visibility of the program and created awareness. The Certified Prevention Specialist is also focused on education through several innovative programs. The compliance staff is currently monitoring active clients in the DWI program, screening and assessing, with some referred to district and magistrate courts and others referred to treatment. In 2018, the DWI program will emphasize compliance, monitoring, screening assessment, coordination, counting and evaluation as suggested by the DFA program manager. Senior program. In Taos County, we honor and we respect our senior constituents. In 2017, Senior Program Director Mike Trujillo and his staff provided 28,291 congregate meals, 45,809 home delivered meals to seniors. They provided 11,272 rides and 5,251 hours of respite and homemaker hours to homebound seniors throughout Taos County. All of this with diminishing budget. Their goal for 2018 is to continue to provide the much needed services to our seniors. Um, this year they will be utilizing general fund obligation money of more than 1.2 million to construct a new Taos County Senior Center, as well as 129,000 to purchase and equip vehicles, including a new vehicle for meal delivery around Taos County. Taos County Fire Department and Fire Chief Mike Corloa has led the team improving facilities and training to better protect our many communities. The shell of San Cristobal Fire Station is up and completion is expected this winter. The Rio Fernando Fire Department building is a priority with the construction beginning after San Cristobal is complete sometime in the spring. The expectation is for completion by the end of the summer. Volunteers have attended state classes on hazmat, firefighter first aid and CPR, as well as driver operator class and a liquid natural gas fire training. Um, Taos County Fire took delivery of two new fire trucks this year. One unit was delivered to Tres Pedras and the other to the Lama Fire Departments. Both units are an asset to Taos County Fire, adding 5,000 gallons of water to help suppress fires. Goals for 2018 include hiring of a county fire marshal to work on fire inspections with, in, in conjunction with planning and zoning. Also finalizing the acquisition of land in Costilla for a new station. In addition, they're also aiming for at least 70% 70, 70 of volunteers attaining their Firefighter 1 status. Our Taos County Emergency Communication Center, directed by Dominic Martinez, along with Lori Weathers and their team, have now been part of Taos County operations for three years. In that time, they have made vast improvements to this vital link between our constituents and the life-saving assistance they may need. In fact, due to these improvements, 2017 audit conducted by the FBI awarded them an A rating. In 2017, they implemented Emergency Medical Dispatch Program um, by Powerful and Total Response. This program encompasses emergency protocols for law, fire, and medical services. They have 10 certified dispatchers who are current on their biennial training hours, plus their certification in Emergency Medical Dispatch, which required an additional 45 days of training. Acquisition and implementation of the program is made possible with the assistance of EMS Director Joaquin Gonzalez and Taos County Fire Chief Mike Cordova. They also added a fourth council for additional personnel to professionally handle the over 100,000 calls, 32,670 of those calls for service. Their priorities for 2018 are improved radio communications for all emergency responders, plus extreme high stress dispatch training, additional priorities in equipment, and future upgrades. 
long-term goal, the next generation 911 dispatch, which uh, with additional radio councils to facilitate a regional dispatch center. Real-time dispatch with camera accessibilities and strategically placed cameras throughout the county. That's the future of 911. Towson County EMS, Joaquin Gonzalez and his EMS crew have made great strides in 2017. Their volume has increased by about 100 calls each year for the last three years. This year they responded to over 4,000 calls, with about 2,800 transported to Holy Cross Hospital. They added five full-time employees for a total of 25 staff. EMS contracted with the UNM Hospital Consortium team of physicians for medical direction for all fire, EMS, and E911. They added special skills and certifications, including the ability to administer the life-saving drug TXA for internal hemorrhaging. They are also the only Northern New Mexico service to have a bariatric ambulance that can transport patients up to 1,000 pounds. They are working with Blue Cross Blue Shield to provide home visits for chronically ill patients with the goal of decreasing non-necessary ambulance transports and ER visits. They donated an ambulance to the village of Cuesta to serve the northern part of our county and a rescue unit to the Penasco Volunteer Fire Department uh, to be used as a specialized unit for rescue equipment and response. Goals for EMS in 2018 include um, increased training, grant funding for specialized equipment, and they are also in the process of completing three grants, one specifically for the completion of the MCI Ambu Bus, which was donated to Taos County Fire EMS by Taos Municipal Schools in case of a mass casualty response. In the Office of Emergency Management Team of Bobby Lucero and Mark Ortega received funding for another year from the Emergency Management Performance Grant, which supported the coordinator position. Funding was also received through the Urban Search and Rescue Grant for Equipment. The team completed training for the Emergency Management Basic Academy through FEMA. They also completed the Emergency Operations Plan, which hadn't been updated since 2010. OEM took back the burn permit process from the planning department and along with Taos County Fire hosted a successful liquid propane glass, gas class in October. Moving forward in 2018, OEM will complete the hazard mitigation plan and bring stakeholders together to conduct tabletop exercises. So we are all working toward the same goals. A search for more grants will continue with the goal of funding equipment to better serve our community in the event of an emergency. They also plan to host more trainings for all first responders and upper management personnel regarding incident management system. In his first full year as warden of the Taos County Detention Center, Nelson Malita and his staff have many accomplishments of which to be proud of, including a completed revision of their policies and procedures adopted by the Board of County Commissioners. Staff development was conducted for both the adult and juvenile detention centers in accordance with New Mexico Association of Counties and Children, Youth, and families, families Department, which means meeting many standards with supporting documentation. With newly adopted policies in place, an MAC accreditation is the next step. There, have, there has been improvement in the retention rate, and the warden and his staff work closely with the health care assistance program case manager, who works strictly with pre-release detainees. Tours of the facility have been conducted by many, including an annual tour by the members of the Board of Commissioners, with few issues reported. On June 6, 2017, the Board of Commissioners heard and approved a plan to utilize part of the Taos County Juvenile Detention Center as a residential treatment center for Taos County youth with substance abuse and addiction issues. In the ensuing six months, over a year's worth of work has been done to further that plan. Andrew Montoya, Nelson Abeta, and Tammy Jaramillo have been leading the way toward making the RTC a reality. A scope of work has been prepared for clinical services with Taos County providing the facilities, meals, and security, and Nonviolence Works as a green principle to provide the clinical services um, with our um, correctional health partners handling the medical services. The goal is to begin construction in January, while an ongoing effort is underway to obtain Medicaid certification, which will create revenue to minimize the use of the general fund appropriation appropriated by the commission. Tammy Hadamil, our health care assistance coordinator, mentioned her staff and Taos County management and employees as being instrumental in the accomplishments of 2017. Taos County Health Care Assistance Program is excited to support the Taos County Detention Center in providing a health care advocate case manager to assist detainees in their health care needs and to reduce the recidivism rate. The HCAP has successfully implemented a NARCRAN program to reduce the fatal effects of opioid overdose 
overdose, which includes a training that allows the detainees to receive a free Narcan kit upon release. Um, HCAP was also instrumental in assisting the county detention in getting a pharmacy agreement that would allow detainees to receive up to a 30-day supply of medication upon release to eliminate a lapse in treatment. Taos County Healthcare Assistance Program has continued their contracts with Community Against Violence, Las Cumbres, and the Men's Homeless Shelter, where during the 2016-17 fiscal year, um, we also added new contracts with Heart of Taos and Inside Out Recovery, and we increased our allocation from 95,000 to 185,000 for this current fiscal year. HCAP has also taken over responsibility for the Taos County Health Council and Holy Cross Hospital. They are also involved on several levels with the Taos County Justice Coordinating Council, which brings together representatives from all the courts and law enforcement entities in the counties. Goals for 2018 include placement of another case manager and a healthcare advocate in the detention center. Taos County Facilities Management Team reports all facilities are currently functioning at optimum level with the exception of Arroyo Seco and Amanda Community Centers, which are both undergoing renovations and improvements. Much progress has been made at these centers and completion is expected in the very near future. Improvements were made at each facility during the calendar year that will enable Taos County to provide improved services to constituents. The maintenance, building improvements, and successfully managed and completed projects will prolong the life of our facilities and increase overall building function and government services. Director Edward Martinez and Code Enforcement Officer Lorenzo Gutierrez of the Solid Waste Operations Team are both nationally certified recyclers. This is just one of the highlights of a busy 2017. The team also completed the Chamisal Transfer Station and Reuse Center. They completed methane monitoring at closed landfills and mulched over 30 tons of brush from local fire waste communities, reducing wildfire risk. They collected over 1.2 tons of debris during the methane cleanup. They partnered with Amigos Bravos, the service, the Forest Service, Rocky Mountain Youth Corps, and volunteers to clean up nearly 20 tons of debris from around the canyon, Cuesta, and the Rio Fernando and Pop Creek. And continued to work with the Forest Service and BLM law enforcement to apprehend eagle dumpers by setting up surveillance cameras. In addition, community service personnel logged over 738 hours picking up litter, mulching, and working on the cleanups. In 2018, they have their sights set on obtaining funding for scales at transfer stations and improving services through staff training, as well as improving our solid waste ordinance. Public Works Director Ramon Pacheco and his crew did an exceptional job this past year maintaining and improving roads throughout Taos County. Major construction projects undertaken include the completion of Santi Esteban Road with gravel and culvert installation. A water drainage system was constructed on Camino del Medio in San Cristobal. 2.2 miles of chip and box seal on Buena Vista Road in Cerro. Um, the remainder of Los Cordobas and Chamisa roads were paved. And constituents saw improved travel with 500 feet of, of pavement on Naina Canyon Road and a hot mix asphalt overlay on El Salto Road, um, as well as gravel from end to end on Nilo Toto Road and a hot mix asphalt overlay was added to it road. Public Works Department road projects for 2018 include County Road 110, Rapid Valley Road, Cuchilla Road, Vallejos, Garcia, and El Rito Roads. Also, Espinosa, Maestas, Lower Hondo, Rio Lucero Roads, and Upper and Lower Yama Road intersection, along with improvements to Bridges County Line. Our Fleet Director, Brian Aragon, may have said it best, big themes are coming for the Taos County Fleet Department. The enthusiasm of Brian and his staff have improved, have improved the organization and systems that keep the fleet moving. They have instituted a new work order system to streamline tracking ongoing and completed work. This has helped plan daily workloads, work history, and specific work assignments for various county departments. One of the biggest improvements in 2017 was the institution of the daily pre-inspection form, which is currently available to all departments. This allows drivers to check their vehicles prior to use in order to identify any problems. Um, the addition of a fleet maintenance administrative assistant has improved the tracking system and enabled systemized spreadsheets to keep records of materials and parts ordered. <coughs> Shop tools were also purchased that have made outside service less necessary and minimized downtime for vehicles and saved the county money. An oil burner was purchased which has enabled the burning of used motor oil to heat the shop, saving the county money. In 2018, focus will be on putting put on getting all departments to utilize forms created. The most important goal is the completion of a new facility. 
to better accommodate maintenance personnel and Taos County departments needing vehicle service. The hope is for a more productive, efficient, and safe working environment. Almost there. <laughs> County Department Edward B. Hill and the County Department staff have successfully revised the Taos County Economic <coughs> Development Plan, our Comprehensive Plan, the LEDA Ordinance, Rural Addressing Ordinance, and Community Wildfire, Wildfire Protection Plan. They created a list of official road names and road addressing fee schedule for Taos County. They also assisted in the creation of Taos County Community Conservation Plan and the Enchanted Circles Trails Plan, as well as creating and assisting in the creation of several websites. The re they received a $260,000 grant from the Nature Conservancy for restoration of the McAfee Fire Area, as well as establishing six firewise communities. Securing approval of the Taos, County, or Taos Regional Water Plan by the Interstate Streams Commission and completing Phase 1 of the Non-Federal Land Grant in Pot Creek. Goals of 2018 include completion of revisions to the land use regulations, subdivision regulations, and the sign ordinance. They also plan to complete the Pinasco Valley Community Wildfire Protection Plan, improve code enforcement, work closely with other departments to establish the Development Review Committee, and dispose of the antiquated planning records. MIS, in the ever-changing role of information systems management, Herb Medina and his staff are constantly seeking ways to better collect, share, and store information for our constituents. In 2017, uh, 2017 has been a year of refocus and updating. Together with other departments, MIS has been able to address the website shortcomings and are in the process of creating a new county website that's going to be easier to navigate and much more interactive. MIS support team, is excited to launch a service desk support ticketing software to assist departments with help desk requests. The software will enable us to better support the employees and give them an easy way to initiate and track requests. MIS support team continues to monitor both the internal and external needs surrounding Taos County by keeping data safe and secure. The biggest goal for MIS over 2018 is a new website. Renee Weber and her human resources staff have focused on the merit ordinance, which was recently adopted, and this was a monumental task. As other than minor amendments, the personnel policies had not been updated since 2006. The new policy allows for updates as necessary, and it brings the county into compliance with federal and state law. In addition, a compensation study is currently in motion, comparing ourselves to other similar tax-based counties. Most department heads have now completed the UNM Supervisory Academy that cover topics, topics such as conflict resolution, time management, ethics, and performance evaluations. The next level of supervisors will begin the coursework next month. It will soon be possible to provide information quickly and accurately through a cloud-based system. This will enable HR to track or accept applications through our website. We are now in the third year of self-funded benefits program. The process has been simplified so that all 290 county employees have pre-filed forms so they can select their benefits for the calendar year. On the horizon for human resources is more comprehensive new hire process as well as continued supervisor training, annual equal employment opportunity awareness training, and prevention and risk management training. The finance department under the leadership of Lupe Martinez continues its efforts in maintaining our fiduciary responsibility to the citizens of Taos County. Centralized purchasing has proven to be successful by allowing the county to maximize its dollar by purchasing various supplies in bulk, consolidating similar departments, and streamlining our leasing contracts. The majority of our finance team have received their credentials as certified procurement officers by the state of New Mexico. During the year, our financial audit team resolved its audit findings with the finance and treasurer staff working together. Management applauds those efforts and will continue to support any changes necessary to ensure fiscal responsibility for our county resources. In conclusion, I would like to thank the amazing team of men and women that work hard every day to serve the taxpayers of Taos County. And I would also want to thank the hardworking elected officials that allow me to serve as your Taos County manager and allow me to lead such a great team. And finally, and most importantly, I want to thank the taxpayers of Taos County for providing both the reason and the resources for us to serve them. There's a lot. Today, um, we do get a lot done every year at Taos County. We have an amazing team. As I mentioned in my introduction, a team succeeds together, um, and we need to continue to work as a team, and we'll continue to succeed. 
will continue to improve for the constituents of Towson County. And I want to thank the Board of County Commissioners specifically for a lot of hard work that was done in 2017. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. I appreciate everyone here today as well. Thanks for the, that support. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Mr. Chairman, before I move forward, I also want to thank Mr. Steve Fullendorf and all of the department heads and elected officials that really worked hard to help get this accomplished. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. A lot has happened to the positive for Taos County, and that benefits our our residents the most, and that's what our focus should always be. Thank you.